turn. Of course, God, that was a good show. God. Yeah. It was a Do you really know, like the really worst good. thing about it was getting to the third match and being worn out and, and having trouble staying with the third match. That oh. was also fantastic. Um, the Kushida, Kushida Gargano was like the best damn match I've watched in that was not a Wrestle Kingdom match. Uh, so, you know, it was just uh, just bonkers. Um, and then, um, of course, Pete Dunn and uh, Finn were just absolutely... I don't know why. I kept thinking that match was a triple threat with Kyle. Really? Yeah, like, I've been watching NXT. I don't it. know why it was in my head. Because he's triple been threat. hovering around, you know. And, yeah, I know, and I know, him. but I, like... As soon as it was like, oh, yeah, it's not a triple threat. It's just straight one-on-one. Okay. Like, it was great. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't know why. I just had it in my head there was a triple threat match. I think it's because in the back of my head, I'm like, it's weird, undisputed. It's not on this pay-per-view. <laughs> there was a little bit of, like, them coming out and be like, wow, undisputed isn't on this pay-per-view. Like, and I'm then... wondering. Uh, all right, I'm going to do some. Uh... I mean, yeah, it was absolutely true because I – when they ran out at the end, I said to myself, "Oh, no one from Disputed Era was on his show. How interesting! Why would they do that? That seems like such a peculiar thing for them to do on this on such a big show, and they haven't done much for a while, right? Wow. But uh, but man, uh, uh, Adam Cole did some Adam Cole things, and uh, and and I don't, man, I can't wait for Adam Cole and Finn Balor." <laughs> Uh, for sure, I mean, and they got to go somewhere with this. I can't wait for Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, yeah, he uh, uh, Fish, Bobby Fish was the linchpin of undisputed area. Without that, Bobby Fish has no clue this is even happening. No. He doesn't even know. <laughs> no. Bobby no. Fish just like, yeah, we were talking about it last night. We we're like, Bobby Fish is going to be Hulk in Endgame. Yeah, he's gonna that, show up in five months and come back on, uh, come back to NXT in five months, full undisputed era entrance, do the post after the ring, be like, Bobby, it's they're done. It's over. <laughs> what? They did what? What about the boom? There's no boom. <laughs> do we do the, the boom? No, Can we no still boom. do the boom? What's happening? Go back, go back to the boom. Get, go backstage and get your ass a new theme song. See you later. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> Riddle's, Before someone sends you to space jail. Riddle's got one for you. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I'm trying. I'm trying to see when the last takeover was that didn't have a member of the Undisputed Era on it. I, I have, okay, they had Kyle O'Reilly at the. No, no, but that's what I'm couple saying. Ago, like, so right. That's and, what I'm saying. Like, I don't think there's been a takeover mm-hmm. since they debuted without the them. undisputed era. But what a what a great cool off to not have them on in order to do the turn, mm-hmm. right? To make you Absolutely. even more just not expect it because you completely forgot about them because they're just freaking blowing shit out of the water with this show from top to bottom. And then all of a sudden, also, also the, the, the turnaround on Pat McAfee on Twitter is saying, see, told you he was a piece of shit. Yeah, Pat McAfee's <laughs> Twitter face turn on a Sunday, late Sunday. So it was, oh, by the way, hashtag Pat was right. It's Bobby so, Heenan telling you that he was right about Hulkamania this whole time. Exactly. So now you've got, yeah, that, so that, now you've got three matches to look forward to now. Uh, you got Balor, Balor and Cole, you've got Cole and O'Reilly, and you have, Heel Cole versus Babyface Pat McAfee. All of a sudden, I want to go back and let's and, go. I want to go back and listen to those shows and and just hear Bobby Pop, Bobby Heenan doing the "I Told You" show. So for like the oh, yeah. first several weeks of the NWO. Okay, right? yeah. so I, I went all the way back to take over Brooklyn Three. That was when the Undisputed Era debuted. That's when Adam Cole debuted. They have been on every takeover, at least one of oh, them. Right? What, what year was that? Uh, <laughs> Take over three. Hold on, that was like I I, I closed the window. Take over Brooklyn three. Yeah, take over Brooklyn three. It's like twenty eighteen. Uh, was from twenty seventeen. All right, four four years, right? Roughly four three. I'll, I'll say three and a half. Three and a half years of undisputed era in NXT. And they and as there I, has I, been I, representation I on every single takeover. And, and I will and I will repeat what I said last night on the on the on on our show Monday night. It was time. It's time. They finally to got this thing up. It's over. So not because they were ineffective or because they weren't you know doing a good job. It's just it's over. They did everything. There's only so much. They yeah, did, they did everything, everything you could do. 
and, yeah. and I will say the last time they're on the takeover was War Games, and they won. Uh, that, was, that was the real send off. And was there? I think that was the last takeover. No, uh, uh, O'Reilly and Balor had a match afterwards. Yeah, but that wasn't a takeover. That was like New Year's Evil or something, wasn't it? Oh, because they had their <laughs> match. They had their match like before War Games. And then, because I, I know they're having these. I feel like there was one in between. No, no, War Games was the takeover before that. So, yeah. So, yeah. the last takeover yeah. match the Undisputed Era had was together in yeah. War Games. It was then. some sort of special event where they did the Finn and O'Reilly again. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, not used to solid long term WWE booking. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's oh, yeah. because it's NXT. It's because it's Wednesday night, guys. You should be used to you should be used to that. Long term booking actually works on Wednesday. Hey, dude, it does uh, we're getting a full Mortal Kombat scenario on <laughs> NXT? And we have not talked about it yet. You know, let, let me point out something else about. Well, but since we're talking, everybody does long term booking, except for main roster WWE. Like yeah. every other company, every other brand, they're all doing long-term booking. You can see everything. You can see the impact stuff coming from a mile away. <laughs> it's just these two shows on Monday and Fridays. They're just kind of like... Oh, I'll, I'll even say Friday does well, some... No one has done about SmackDown. Friday does some Friday's long-term doing better. booking. They, they do some. Yeah. They do some. Like, I, I'm sure the plan was to get The Rock for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. That ain't in the cards, Mm-mm. but I'm sure that Very was the plan. Optimistic mm-hmm. booking, <laughs> optimistic fantasy booking going on here. It's, well, that's it's what, contagious. That's how what a lot of it. I mean, it really, when we talk about you know, especially something like WWE booking, you're talking about, and this has been stated on several of the documentaries 